Manuel Pito, Honourable Bowen, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to greet you in the mighty name of God. It is certainly good to be here. My name is Mapa, and I'm the newly uh, installed moderator for the United Church for the State of New South Wales and the Australian Capital Territory. I am a wife, I am a mother, I'm a Tongan woman by birth. At the age of eight, this is a time when I first experienced what we now call as a climate crisis. I remember being huddled in the corner of our little house in Longolongo in Tonga Nualofa with my siblings and my parents were trying to shield and protect us while the cyclone was ravishing our home, the roof was beginning to lift. We know that climate justice is real. The cyclones and the typhoons, as Joyce has mentioned, is becoming a lot more frequent and a lot more harsh. I want my children and my grandchildren to receive our earth in the best shape possible and that is why we are absolutely here today. 23 days ago I was installed as the moderator of this church, United Church. I have served in ministry for over 20 years here in Sydney and across regional and country in New South Wales. Since the United Church came into being in 1977, the United Church has always committed itself and has seen the importance of caring for the environment because that is who we are as part of the gospel, to care for God's creation. In 2019, we took that further and we made that as a commitment of the United Church and we committed to what we call as our climate action strategy. There were three main areas. One was to advocate to all levels of government, and that is why our minister is here, to have a more stronger plan for reducing emissions. To reduce emissions, secondly, it was to reduce emission in all of our church properties, schools, agencies, and to ensure that we were using clean energy at every level of the church. And thirdly, is to support our young people. They've been a part of the school strike marches that has taken place over the past years. And part of that is responding to uh, supporting them. So these are some of the actions and the commitment that we have uh, engaged with at the ch as a church. And at the heart of all of this action is a conviction that the perspective and voices of Pacifica people and First Nations people need to be heard. Today we will hear the diversity that is among us. We come from different cultures and we have our own different backgrounds, traditions. We embrace a range of political views and we live across both city and country areas. Yet we are bound together with a common understanding and a purpose to do what is right for humanity and all people. Friends, our journey to be here began before the federal election. And we invited politicians to come and share with us their strategy on climate. Honourable Bowen was there. And he promised that if he was voted into government, he would meet with us to talk about the government's plan. And we are grateful that you are holding on to that commitment and is here today. Minister, today you will see and hear and feel the sacredness of our Pacifica culture through stories, through songs, or even just being together. You will hear our Dalanoa, testimonies from people of our communities about the impact of climate change, the cost of the living pressures in our society, and the threat of our sacred culture. Dalanoa, Mr. Bowen, is a Pacifica word for conversation and for talk. But today we are saying that we want to move from the talking to more action for our climate. 
So I call on you, all of you here in the room, uh, as leaders, as church, uh, to continue to stand for that. I, as a moderator, have a personal commitment to this uh, area of my role as a leader in the church. So today, Mr Bowen, I call on you to stand with us and with our First Nations people who are on the front line of the climate crisis. But you also know that we have contributed the least to what we are now impacting, both here in Australia and particularly in our little islands. And so I call on you, Mr Bowen, to accelerate the transition to renewable future and to ensure that the transition happens equi with equity, fairness and social justice at its heart. Mr Bowen, this is my last call for today, but it's certainly not going to be my last call in my term as a moderator, because I'm going to just going to keep calling you time and time again. Today, I call you to listen to the cry of the earth, to listen to the voices in the Dalana of our Pacifica people and our community. Learn from us. Be with us. Give us a seat at the table, maybe. <laughs> to live in a more harmonious, sustainable way for the betterment of God's creation. And for roll call, this is a chance to recognise the power, the diversity, the community represented in this full room today. Each and every one of you will have the opportunity to stand. When we call your group or organisation, please stand as you're able. I begin by calling First Nations people in the room, the traditional owners and custodians of this land, please stand. <laughs> following people from the Pacifica Nations to please stand. Those from the Samoan community. Yay! Please stand. Those from our interfaith and ecumenical networks, other churches and other faiths, please stand. Today, representing more than oh, the more than 30 organisations, communities, and climate groups, unions who are passionately and tirelessly campaigning for climate justice, please stand. Thank you. And lastly, if you 
are in this room today and want stronger action on climate change and climate justice now, please stand. Thank you so much. Before we move on, I'd like to mention Raul. Please stand. He will be our timekeeper today and we'll keep ringing the bell when we need to move on. Thank you. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce Natasha Holmes and the talented musicians of Uniting Creative. Nurture my identity and shape how I live in this country 
and my relationships with the First Peoples of this land. As Nathan mentioned, one of the common threads that bind Pacifica relations with First Peoples is our deep connection to the land, which also encompasses ocean and sky, all of the non-human creation, which we understand not to be separate from, but bound together. My ecological conversion began several years ago, looking out the window of the Fiji Airways flight as it approached Tuvalu. I was deeply struck by how narrow Funafuti was, and from a bird's eye view, I could see how much the land was being slowly swallowed up by sea level rise. <coughs> looking at the helpless land below me, I was moved to tears. For the first time, the science of climate change and the burden of its impact on real human lives connected for me. Climate change is real. Its impact is real. And it affects the everyday lives and spirituality of real people. In this instance, people who on the long term are most likely to lose the physical essence of home. I felt the heavy weight of that truth and was confronted by my own complicity, ignorance and apathy in contributing to the problem. Being a voting Australian citizen adds complexity to that complicity. As specific of people, the interconnectedness and interrelatedness of our human identity and dignity cannot be underestimated. Pacific people have traditionally had a holistic and relational worldview of their relationship with their environment. And as Solomon Islander theologian Le Leslie Basito describes, Pacifica existence and survival can never be separated from our land and sea. From a Pacific perspective, human identity is understood as being intrinsically interconnected with the land, the sea, creation, and community. For Pacific people, land, or in other um, Pacific languages, the Vanua, Fenua, Wenua, encompasses and embodies the physical, spiritual, social, and cultural. As Basito explains, God's location is in creation. Our life in God is in creation. Everything is interconnected. Human beings, the seasons, and all living creatures and plants all play a part in keeping the delicate balance of life. Land holds deep connections and roots that ground culture, identity, kinship, and spirituality, all of which are interconnected, integrated, and wholly one. Pacific spirituality embodies a profound respect for creation as an interconnected, interrelated web of life, living as a caring and resilient community and valuing well-being above profit. Wholeness, oneness, and unity of all things, human and non-human, is held together by a spirituality of relationality. Indigenous cultures understand this simple and deep truth that we are all part of the ecosystem which is the web of life. Creation is not other or commodity or means to profits. But if creation, as First Peoples of Canada believe, is thought of as our kin, our family, then that being so, we ought to be responsibly caring for creation as we do our family and friends with respect, love, compassion, and fierce protection. <laughs>